Hi everybody, it's Andy here again, welcoming you to this instructional video in which I'll talk you through the final two bits of evidence for Unit 1, and that is the Communication Technologies table, which is for P5, and the Audience Description, which is for P6. Now, the reason there isn't a separate new assignment for, the, for this evidence is because it isn't really new work. It's just supporting evidence and additional explanations for work you've already done in other units that we can then use as evidence for Unit 1, meaning you don't have to duplicate work unnecessarily. So the first of these two final bits of evidence is called the Communication Technologies Table, and it covers P5 of the unit. The Communication te Technologies Table is a summary of the different types of IT-based communication methods that you've used this year, maybe in Unit 1, maybe in, in other units, but a, a summary of, of all the various different kinds of IT-based communication methods you've used. Also, the situations in which you use them, the features of each one that you used, and the reasons for using each one. So you can see I've opened a piece of work from last year here, and it's just a, a table in Microsoft Word, four columns and uh, seven rows. Uh, you will use the same column headings as Aaron used here last year in his piece of work. So they are communication technology, where it was utilized, features which were utilized, and reason for using the technology. And your um, your six communication technologies, your six examples of communication technology that you have used will be the same as well. And they will be word processor, presentation software, email, web browser, blog, and instant messaging. So the, the first row and the first column of your table will be exactly the same as this. They're standard. You don't need to make those up. Uh, it's um, There's no need for any, uh, any thought on your part there at all. But all the other cells in this table will contain your work. And the way it works is, starting with Word Processor, which of course was uh, the um, uh, Microsoft Word is a word processor we've been using this year for, for any uh, uh, word processing type work. Um, and you see Aaron here has got the example of uh, from another unit, not from Unit 1, but from Unit 3. Uh, and that is assignment 3.1 in which he has he used the uh, Microsoft Word to create a user guide showing different components which are inside of a computer system. The way you should choose which example to use because you will have were you will have used word a lot for for lots of things this year uh, for lots of assignments just just in this in this unit itself just in unit one but you should choose c quite carefully which one you only need one example it has to be a specific example and the way to have decide which one to use will be to remember that you will then have to describe what features you used of Microsoft Word. So choose an assignment where you use Microsoft Word, where you used a lot of its features, for example, changing font, changing font size, uh, maybe, maybe using heading styles as well, and lots of the features of Word uh, that you can you can then mention in the third column. If you make the wrong decision in the, co in the second column of which example of Word to use, you won't have anything to say in the third column. So think very carefully about that. Choose an example where you used Word and you used a lot of its features and you mention those in the third column. Um, think as well, before you choose the example of uh, the, um, to put in the second column, think about the final column here, because you're going to have to justify uh, why you used that particular type of communication technology rather than others. And when you're, um, when you're thinking about that, think about why you use Microsoft Word for this rather than all the other things in this column, rather than PowerPoint or Outlook. Or, uh, or Google Chrome as a web browser, or a blog in WordPress, or instant messaging in Moodle. So you, you see how the table, it compares various ways of communicating with IT against others in different situations. And again, if you make the right choice in this column, this column will then be easier, and so will this one. Um, you were saying things in the third column, like, I chose Microsoft Word rather than PowerPoint, because I wanted to print it out, for example, and hand it to people, rather than use PowerPoint, which involves you making a presentation quite often, one person talking to lots of people. So there's a sort of a, a knock-on effect. If you choose the right thing, the right example to use, I and mean, you will have you will have plenty of examples for uh, to choose from for Microsoft Word. You've used it a lot. If you choose the right one in column two, then column three is then easy, 
and column four is easy. So don't don't make a rash decision about which one to choose and then uh, have to go back on it because it doesn't allow you to uh, to fill in the third and fourth columns. If you choose the right situation, then features which I used and reasons I used this type of technology rather than all the others that are in this table will be a lot easier. The other thing you'll need to do for this uh, evidence for P5, the communication technologies table, is as well as talking about uh, the different communication technologies that you used this year, uh, in the table, uh, we won't be able to take your word for it that these things have been used. You'll notice that some of the communication technologies here are, uh, are blue and underlined, the telltale signs of a hyperlink. Because what you also have to produce for this is evidence to back up what you're saying. So what Aaron's got here uh, is a hyperlink to uh, evidence further down in the form of screenshots that he did actually produce this piece of work. This is evidence that I used the word processor to complete assignment 3.1 there. And for his evidence of using uh, Outlook, he's got a screenshot of his uh, his inbox there. So you do have to actually back up what you're saying in the table with some proof. And uh, as I say, Aaron has, uh, has actually hyperlinked the uh, the table to the evidence so that you can uh, you can find it very easily. You can see if I zoom out on the document here, he's got the table on the first page in a bit, the first couple of pages, and then all his evidence after that, uh, which is hyperlinked from the table so you can find it very easily. So in summary then, and then this uh, this table, the first column has got uh, a series of different types of communication technology methods, six of them all together. Remember, you use the same ones as in this table. You don't have to make up your own. In the second column is a, a very carefully chosen uh, example of a single example of your use of that communication technology this year. It doesn't have to be from unit one. It can be from any unit. The third column is the features of that uh, type of communication technology that you used. And finally, reasons for using it there. And the rest of this document is uh, supporting evidence that you actually those things did actually happen and that you're not making it up in the table. So the evidence for this one then, that uh, you've been successful, will be a completed table like this uploaded to the, the link on Moodle for me to have a look at. So I hope you're uh, confident now to go ahead and create the communication technologies table which gives you P5. The second bit of evidence that this video covers is uh, something called the audience description, which gives you P6. I've opened up here, again, it's some work from Aaron from last year, and it's actually the 3.1 work that he talked about in, uh, in his table just now. The final bit of evidence is to write an audience description for this piece of work. Now, obviously, this isn't, uh, this isn't a Unit 1 piece of work. It's from uh, Anna's uh, Unit 3, and it's the first assignment where you had to write uh, a guide to components of a computer system as if for a novice. And here it is, and Aaron's got a very nice piece of work here. The audience description is simply a description of the specific audience that you aim this at. When you wrote this for, uh, for uh, Unit 3, you, uh, you should have had a particular audience in mind, technically minded, but not, not experts. So the final piece of evidence, the audience description, is just a description of that audience. And if I switch to uh, Aaron's version of that, you can see it's not a massive piece of work. <clears throat> it's just literally um, describing the audience, how technical they were. Maybe if, they, if you feel uh, in your head that they were a particular age or even uh, <clears throat> a particular gender, maybe it was aimed more at males than females, uh, then you say so in this uh, uh, audience description here. And that is the, um, that is the evidence for P6 called the audience description. Okay, and that's both both pieces are, are these final two pieces of evidence described for you there and explained hopefully uh, in a useful way to you. Uh, the, um, the examples I've used in this video will also be on Padlet. So the uh, the communications table and uh, the uh, so the communications table there is on Padlet for you to look more closely at. The Aaron's uh, Guide to Components of a Computer System as well and his audience description will all be on Padlet by the time you watch this video. So, remember the successful, the, the uh, signs that you've been successful with these last two will be uploads of the communications table to Moodle, to the link on Moodle, that's that one. A upload of the audience description to the link on Moodle and also I'd like you, even if you've uploaded it to the 3.1 link for Anna, I'd also like you to upload 
your guide to components of a computer system so I can, because uh, it goes hand in hand with the audience description that you created, again, to the link on Moodle. And that will be the, uh, the sign that you've been successful with this one. will be good pieces of work uploaded there. Okay, so um, thanks for listening to this instructional video all about the last two pieces of evidence for Unit 1. Uh, after you've done these two, that will be all the evidence for Unit 1. Um, and uh, I hope you found it interesting and found it useful, you should now go ahead and try and complete Unit 1 completely. As always with my videos, if you are in any way unclear, you should go through the video again and uh, rewind or pause and have a go yourself. And if you're really still stuck, then you can always ask me, of course. So bye for now, and see you on the next video.